Thank you for joining us reading through the Revelation. We're in chapter 2. The seven messages to the seven churches are in chapter 2 and chapter 3. So we are going to be picking up in chapter 2, verse 1. Write this letter or this message to the angel of the church in Ephesus. Again, the angel was the star that we saw in chapter 1. Could be a guardian angel of the church or the spiritual leader of the church. Write this letter, this message to the angel of the church in Ephesus. We read uh, a lot about Ephesus in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 19 and chapter 20. Paul spent three years in Ephesus teaching the congregation. And so Ephesus was a main commercial town. Uh, it had many temples and so forth there to false pagan gods. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. Now the stars were either the angels of the church or the pastors of the church, and the lampstand is, of course, the church itself. Now these seven churches in Turkey represent all churches of all times. They have something to say to us even today. Uh, 2,000 years later. Verse 2. I know all the things you do. That can be a frightening thing or that can be a comforting thing. If we're doing wrong, it could be a thing of warning, a thing that pricks our conscience. Uh, but if we're doing what is right, it could be a comforting thing that God knows that. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. There's that patient endurance that we saw in chapter 1. I know you don't tolerate evil people. So it seems like these people at this church were taking a hard stand against people who taught wrong or did wrong. Uh, they were good at hating evil and standing up for truth. Uh, that was a part of their DNA, evidently, at the church of Ephesus. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles or leaders, but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. Isn't that a beautiful description? You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. Don't give up. In this town was the temple of the emperor Domitian. Domitian was the reigning emperor at the time, and he was wanting to be called Lord and God and be worshipped. But they have patiently suffered for their faith without quitting. Verse 4. But I have this complaint against you. Uh oh You don't love me or love each other as you did at first. So although they were hard on the truth, rough on sin, they weren't very loving about it. Whenever you have devotion to truth, you must have the complement character of love. You must be people that have a characteristic that love in truth. Evidently, the church of Ephesus and their leaders uh, were good at hating evil, hating wrong and weeding out those who didn't line up correctly. But they weren't very loving about it. It seems they had let their love for God grow cold. They had let their love for one another grow cold. And most likely they have let their love for outsiders grow cold. And so this is the complaint of Jesus with this church at Ephesus. It's great that you're hanging in there and teaching the truth, but you got to be loving. It's a key component to Jesus' followers. You got to love like he loved. Yeah, you still speak the truth, but you got to be loving about it. Verse 5 Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. And eventually the church of Ephesus died out. But this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans, just as I do. 
most likely the Nicolaitans were peoples that wanted to compromise their faith. And they were trying to teach others to compromise their faith, maybe for the benefit of getting out of suffering and persecution in their day. But whatever it was, Ephesus leaders said, no, we're not going to be like that. But they did it without love. Now notice the prescription for the church of Ephesus. First, they need to renew. Renew your faith in me. Renew your love in me. Then he says, return. Turn back to me, he says. Do the first works. Redo. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. So look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me. Renew your faith. Return to me. And do the first works you did at first redo and if you don't repent which reversely signifies that we should repent then we would follow the prescription of Christ and return to our first love so renew your faith return to Jesus redo your first works and repent of your wrong and so Jesus gives this prescription Verse 7, as he closes this message to the churches, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit. Notice he's talking to anyone. Anyone in 96 AD at the church of Ephesus or anyone in our day, in our era, who listens to the church of Ephesus' message and finds it either convicting or encouraging. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, which implies to me that life is a battle. But in this life, with Jesus on our side, we can become victorious. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit from the tree of life in the paradise of God. And of course, that reference references clear back in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, the Garden of Eden, the paradise of God, the tree of life. And so what Jesus is saying to Ephesus, if you hang in there and not only do what is right, but love God, love people, love the outsider, you will find that your eternal destiny is one of blessedness and life forevermore. Thank you for joining us on this message to the Church of Ephesus, and may God bless you and keep you.